All right. Hello and welcome to the Town of Litchfield Recreation Commission meeting. Tonight is Tuesday, November 23rd, 2021. We're meeting in the Town Hall Conference Room. The time is 7.30 p.m. We do have a WebEx running for a remote participant if he joins. At this moment, he is not there. Uh, we'll start off with the roll call of members present. First, I'd like to take a moment to welcome Ms. Judy Brennan as an official full-time member. She was sworn in this week. So thank you, Judy. Um, my name is Steve Gannon. I am the chair. I am present. Mr. Andy Ruggles, vice chair. Present. Mr. Peter Ames, secretary. Present. Ms. Judy Brennan, member. Present. Mr. Christopher Burns, member. Present. Mr. Stephen Weber, Weber board of selectmen rep. Present. We have two members out today with prior notification, Mr. Mike Bosky and alternate Jeff Town. So we do have a quorum with six members. Um, oh, Jeff just joined. Can you hear us, Jeff? All right. Um, let us know when you're available, Jeff, if you could hear us. I just joined. You can hear us? And I am here. All right, so we have to vote to allow Jeff to, to vote. Yeah, to speak remotely. Yeah. All right, so um, we have to do a, a roll call vote to allow Mr. Jeff Town alternate to participate. Actually, we don't, he could, he's an alternate. I don't need to vote tonight. Well, he still has to, you could replace um, Mike Bosky. So we'll do a roll call vote to allow Mr. Jeff Town to participate remotely. Um, because he is participating remotely, we have to do roll call vote. Uh, my name is Steve Gannon. I say aye. Andy Ruggles? Aye. Peter Ames? Aye. Judy Brennan? Aye. Chris Burns? Aye. Steve Weber? Aye. All right. First thing we're going to go over is consideration of previous meeting minutes. We have two. Uh, November 10th, 2021. <coughs> this was the special meeting for the RFP review. Uh, members present that evening were myself, Andy, Mike, Chris, Jeff, and Steve Weber. Has everybody had a chance to read the meeting minutes? All right. Can I have a motion to accept the meeting minutes for November 10th, 2021? Make a motion to accept those minutes. Thank you, Chris. Second. Thank you, Steve. Uh, any, oh, I have one correction. Um, the amount with the 2% discount should be 83300.98, not 8339800. So 83,398 cents, not $83,398. That's the only correction I saw. Any other edits, changes that need to occur? All right, we'll do a roll call vote to accept. Um, Andy Ruggles? Aye. Peter Ames? Aye. Mr. Burns? Aye. Miss Brennan? Abstain. I wasn't here. Oh, you were not here. That's. Thank you for catching that. It was Jeff? Mr. Jeff Town? Aye. I'm out. And I also. So that would be what do we got? One, two, three, two, four. Six. Six zero zero. Six zero one. Six zero one. Thank you. <laughs> Help me with this simple math. <laughs> uh, second one we have is a regular meeting, November 9th, 2021. Members present were myself, Andy, Peter, Mike, Chris, and Jeff. Absent that evening was Judy and Steve Weber. Could I have a motion to accept the meeting minutes for November 9th, 2021? Make a motion to accept those minutes as well. I'll second. Thank you, gentlemen. Any changes, corrections? All right, we'll do a roll call vote. I am an aye. Mr. Ruggles? Aye. Mr. Ames? Aye. Mr. Burns? Aye. Mr. Town? Aye. The motion will carry. Oh, abstained. Judy, will you there? Abstain. No, abstain. Abstain. abstain, and Steve will abstain. So it'll be 502. Uh, public input. We don't have anything for public input tonight. Nobody else is here except for Jay. We expected him. Um, we'll move on to facility and field requests. We have one 603 Cornhole would like to have their annual Litchfield Angel Tree 
Brian Fletcher and Sean Haley. Uh, Friday, December 17th at 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. at Talent Hall. Uh, Angel Tree funds that go into Litchfield Food Pantry in a collection of backpacks, winter coats, socks, tents for Manchester homeless, organized by Justin Haley, Jordan Fletcher, and Matthew Haley, and given to Kelly Pilat for the Michael Stephen Boyd Memorial Foundation. <clears throat> My understanding is they will be holding a cornhole tournament in a combination food and clothing drive. Usually it's a toy drive, but because of the lack of toys, they decided to go with a food and clothing drive as well. Um, I do not see a certificate of insurance. I believe they probably have one, but I also believe in the past they have teamed up with the Recreation Commission and we helped sponsor this event. Mm -hmm. So we they'll be covered under our insurance. Um, I believe Andy also talked with basketball, right? I did, and they said they'd be willing to move right. tonight. So can I have a motion to accept 603 Cornhole Annual Litchfield Angel Tree for de Friday, December 17th, 17th at 5 p.m.? So moved. Thank you. Can I have a second? Second. Any discussion? My, oh, uh, police no, detail. No, police detail. Yeah. Is police detail. Yeah. Because I, so I think it's a BYOB event usually. All right. I will reach out to – actually, do you want to reach out to the chief? I, want to. I think they need to reach out to oh, the they chief. Oh, they have to reach yeah. out to yeah. They had it in the past. I went to another one, and they had the – Every time they've done it, I think they've had three of them now, I think, inside of yeah, town. And every time detail. they've had a police detail. They so. have a big turnout. 40, 50 people probably. Oh, really? Yeah. All right. All right, we'll get in touch with uh, – the gentleman and ask them to make sure they align police detail for that evening. Make sure they know what they need to do to clean up and shut yeah. down. Yeah, yeah. So police detail and cleaning up. Boy, could that floor use a washing. <laughs> <laughs> With that Sunday night, it's bad. Is it? Oh. Who can we get? Can with the janitor do that, or is that something we probably have to tackle on? Right? Even if it's just dry mop once in a while, wet mop, or whatever, just, just something to gritty it up. I laid down. I had dust all over. It's, it's <laughs> bad. When the girls just grab your legs and sweep you around. <laughs> Only take a few passes. <laughs> all right. So we need police detail, and we'll speak to them about cleaning up. I'll probably show up to the event. Um, my wife's going to Celtics game that night with my son, so I'll have nothing else to do. Um, any other discussion? All right. All those in favor, please oh, roll call vote. Um, I am an I. Mr. Ruggles? Aye. Mr. Ames? Aye. Mr. Burns? Aye. Ms. Brennan? Aye. Mr. Town? Aye. Mr. Weber? Aye. So that's, what do we got? Seven? Seven. Yep. No objections and no abstains. Seven, zero, zero. All right. Moving on. New business. Um, compact tractor purchase was tabled at the last meeting. Um, as a reminder, the motion was to spend up to $15,000 for the joint purchase between Rec Commission and Conservation Commission for a compact tractor with accessories, accessories and a potential trailer. Uh, a couple things. There was the budget was concerned, um, and Mr. Brennan has showed up to represent the Conservation Commission and provide us with some of his slides. So let's start off. Do we have the motion again? We already had a motion. We tabled it. So we could just go right mm -hmm. into discussion, right? All right. So we'll just go right into discussion. Jay, if you want to yep. I'll just through what you got. Real brief. I sent on an email a couple of weeks ago. I just printed that email out. This um, outlines the process that we've gone through. We've been looking at this for six months. We've done a lot of due diligence. We've, take, we've even uh, gone to a couple of tractor dealers to check things out. We've run the analysis. We've looked at the different models and things like that and um, put together put together this plan. So all of what you see here in this document is just a summary of what's been done. Um, while we were out there checking out tractors, we actually got a few prices from folks for the Kubota tractor. We'll talk about different models in, in a second. But we got some pricing from that, and they end up in the vicinity of $24,000 with the bucket on the front and the mower underneath, not the backhoe on the back. Also in this package is a spec sheet 
on the two different models that we're looking at, which would be number one would be the Kubota B series, which you see right here. And number two, things wigging out on me a little bit, would be the John Deere two series. They're the equivalent type of models. Those are the ones that I think we would get official bids on. The spec sheet for the B series is in this package. And then the last page is kind of a informational sheet on the on the John John Deere tractor. Uh, the Conservation Commission at this month's meeting earlier this month uh, voted to spend up to fifteen thousand dollars contingent on splitting it with the recreation to purchase a tractor with the two attachments uh, described uh, from the Conservation Commission's perspective. We think that'll provide you know, quite a bit of value. We've got a lot of fields to mow. We've got a lot of trails to maintain. There are areas that we want to brush out and make into new conservation accessible uh, areas. So we think there's going to be a lot of a lot of benefit here. Um, and talk. So right there is the Kubota model tractor that we were talking about. There's the price. The initial price on the side and that's in in the sheet and then i got together with steve and we took a look at the different um budgets that we have here and i'll just talk to the conservation piece and steve can talk to the recreation piece and as i mentioned um we have approved spending up to fifteen thousand dollars those funds will come from the quote unquote conservation fund which actually comes from the land use change tax um we've got an account that's got a significant sum of money in it and we're looking to spend uh you know, use those funds to support this tractor per purchase from the recreation standpoint um <clears throat> we have three encumbered funds that we um, one was for the gate for five thousand dollars one was for the deck at talent hall for eight thousand dollars the third was for um, twenty five hundred dollars for bark mulch at uh, the playground out of those funds, can you go to, can you have that other slide? Yep. All right, so this is a budget. This was as of Friday. Mm -hmm. um, if you look down at the bottom, the encumbered, you have the gate, the mulch, and the deck. So out of the $5,000 for the gate, we still have all $5,000. We've discussed it at many meetings and we just could not come up with a plan to move the gate. Um, the mulch, we allocated 2,500. Oh, trying to see if I can zoom in, but I can't. Oh yeah, I can. <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> We only spent 810 and we got what 30 yards, I believe, right? Yeah. It's still a pile sitting there. Uh, so 1690 there. If we had a tractor, we could move that pile. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, it's still sitting there? Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> Deck, we allocated $8,000. Right now, we're about 4667 that we used. Uh, we were fortunate enough where the Air National Guard came in and built the deck for free. So we paid for the material. They built the deck. Out of that, I still have a dumpster fee. We still have the dumpster sitting behind the yep. building waiting to be picked up. I'm estimating it's going to be about $600. I really don't know the actual price. Um, so I put it at, you know, we will use up forty six sixty seven. So when you take those incumbent funds, you total them up, it's $10,023. Now, these funds we have encumbered twice already. If we do not use them or re-encumber them from, by the end of the year, they will be uh, absorbed into the general fund. Mm -hmm. I did speak with um, Troy about uh, encumbered funds, and we can reuse them, right? So you could actually reuse encumbered funds for another reason, or you could only re-encumber them, I think, twice for the same purpose, but then you could yep. reuse them for another purpose. So that'll give us uh, 10000 whatever. Now, if you look at our budget this year, um, custodian, we still have about $3,300 left. Obviously, with COVID, we weren't getting a lot of uh, uh, cleaning services done at Talent. Electricity, propane, water, we're going to run propane and water. We're going to run into the, to the red. So what I'm not, I'm not going to touch the electric. We'll leave that so that it could balance out the propane and water if need be. Uh, building repair and maintenance, we've allocated $4,500, $2,540. And that includes the swing set, the two swings. Um, it's just not reflected in the numbers just yet. So I put it in there as 2540. So there's 1960. Uh, trash container services, <coughs> toilets, public notices, et cetera, that we're not going to touch that. General supplies, we have 376 left. 
equipment repair and maintenance, 387. Uh, field maintenance, that's a set set number. Equipment purchase, we have $10 left. And then program <laughs> expenses. Program expenses would be um, we gave $500 to Christmas in Litchfield. If we did a fishing derby, we'd come out of there. So if you take those numbers, you come up with sixty nine forty eighty eight. So between the two, we have over fifteen thousand um, dollars. Something to keep in mind: the way the budgets work is we're a bottom line budget. So if we don't spend that money, it will be we don't get to keep it, and it doesn't go back to the taxpayers. This is already allocated, um, so we can actually reallocate that as long as we don't go over. I guess you would say. So that gives us over sixteen thousand dollars towards a tractor. And that does not touch the revolving account that we also have. Now, what happens if it's not, so if it's not $30,000, you split the difference of, you know, that, yeah, it goes back into each operating fund. Yeah. Yeah. So what our intention is, is um, the tractors, as you can see on the bids are about 24 to $26,000. We want to try to get a trailer as well yeah. or other attachments. Um, you know, brush hog. a brush hog would be number one. A tiller for the fields would be very helpful. It would also be great for the Conservation Commission um, for the, the garden. Um, and then there's some other things like a rock bucket so that we can clean up around that uh, talent hall and Roy Memorial Park. And um, there's just all kinds of other small attachments. When it comes to it, the attachments, the things like the brush hog, the tiller, you would want to try to buy new because they are mechanical. But when you get a, a, a rake or a bucket, it's just metal. And it either works or it doesn't. <clears throat> Um, so those are the kind of things, if we can, we'll try to buy used, you know, secondhand. The, the motion for the Conservation Commission was up to $15,000. Yeah. So if it comes in below that, then we just won't spend spend the money. Yeah. So yours is different because you're not using encumbered funds. So what's the intent? You're going to pre-purchase it? Yeah. So we can get an invoice this year? Yeah. At least. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Good point. So um Pending appro approval tonight, what we would do is go out to bid, and we have two or three specific models that we would request bids from, from John De Deere dealers and Kubota dealers. We would also get a spec sheet from each of those just to weigh the pros and cons of each each piece of equipment and determine potentially you know, what um, attachments can go on what and see if there are any limitations. And then based on that, I think we would come back to the commission here and approve Approve, vote to approve on on one of those. I suspect that the based on what we're hearing, and there are some municipal discounts, but we're in a different time now because the, the supply chain is all messed up, as as we've all as we've all heard. But I think it'll probably come in in the twenty four range. That's what I'm just I'm just guessing. And at that point in time, we'll have to figure out. All right, do we want to get another attachment? Can we pick up a trailer? somewhere there might be somebody in town that has a trailer hanging around we might be able to pick up for cheap or there might be one hit sitting out behind the highway department that no one uses yep. we'll figure that out and um so that that thirty thousand dollars is really the upper upper limit budget yeah yeah what i'd, I'd like only to have six weeks yeah so what i'd like to do is if we find something use the recreation funds to put the deposit on it and then when everything is squared away then um conservation will be able to pull from their funds to square things out. That's true. Yeah, especially because we use an encumbered, so we have to make sure those are used before December 31st. Yeah. What is the expected delivery? Um, it's a very good question. There are some folks that's, and Steve, back me up here if I got this wrong. Um, Chapel Tractor, for example, has tractors available but doesn't have the bucket. So we might be able to get the, tra to get the tractor, get the mower, but the buckets are the thing that are on the container ships out yep. in Los Angeles somewhere. Um, so that's what we're, we're told by them. Um, if we had to wait on it, they're telling me like in March or something, they would be able or to deliver. Season, but we might be able to take delivery now with the exception of the bucket. Right, right. And that's what the gentleman was saying is, yeah, you can get a partial, you can get the full tractor. It just doesn't have any accessories. They can get their hands on something, but the buckets were a little surprising. <clears throat> Um, what else? All right. Um, any other conversation, discussion? Very helpful. Thank you. Help answer the questions that you had last week. Perfect. Yeah.
Um, I think we get a lot of use out of it, especially the first couple of years. The other thought is when we look back at our RFP, we broke it into two. This, we may be able to take advantage of that second part that would put out the bid for $12,000. And some of that work, maybe we could start doing internally or <clears throat> get a summer intern or something. Yeah. Um, just doing the brush hogging would be you know, a substantial savings. We also know that there's a lot of cleanup that we need to do that we haven't been able to do. Um, and manual labor with wheelbarrows, as you know, last week you're hauling dirt with your arms. Um, we could just get a lot more done. Any other discussion? All right. Um, so we'll do them. Oh. So we can jump back. Jeff, were you able to? Jeff, were you able to hear all that? Yes, I was. Do you have any questions? Yes. I, the question was about um, trailer and whether we should include that in, in the initial you know, you know, initial package, whether we buy it new or, or find one used. Um, it seems to me that that would be a pretty important piece to make it around now. Yeah, so that is something, um, as we said, the actual – tractor portion will be between 24 and 26 um we have if we go up to 30 we will try to find a trailer i know there's some available even brand new uh, there's a gentleman concord that has a couple um and it'll be the ones i've seen are probably 2500 to five thousand dollars depending on the size um so we would i would try to definitely try to include a trailer in that so that we could move it around the tractor itself is they're not really that heavy when you look at them fully loaded with all the hardware on it it's i think 2200 pounds um and as i said before with 2200 pounds anybody with a half ton vehicle will be able to move it around town and if you don't have a vehicle i know any one of us will probably step up and help relocate it if somebody needs to use it for whatever reason does that answer your question jeff well i i would like to include a tractor in the in what we vote on tonight so that we don't have to come back and, and do that again. Um, I, you know, I, my, my view, we should be able to vote on approving it tonight, um, leave the details to the experts who have been digging into it already. Um, and you know, if we include the, the trailer in that, then I don't think we need to talk about it again. I think he's uh, saying that he, he, to include it in the motion. Yeah, the tractor and trailer. Tractor, trailer. Tractor, trailer. You might even want to say tractor, trailer, and attachments. Attachments. Then you cover everything, and then it's not keep coming back to us. Vote for one more addition if it's out of the <clears throat> out of the spec on what we actually vote for. Okay, not to exceed $30,000. Well, yes. 15. 15 each, yep. Yeah. Good idea. All right. Just this. All right. So the motion is to uh, approve the spend of up to fifteen thousand dollars for a joint purchase between the Recreation Commission and the Conservation Commission for a compact tractor with attachments and a trailer. Can I will make that motion? Can I have a second? A second. Thank you, Judy. And we'll do a roll call vote. Um, I am an aye. Uh, Mr. Ruggles? Aye. Mr. Ames? Aye. Ms. Mr. Burns? Aye. Ms. Brennan? Aye. Mr. Town? Uh, Mr. Jeff Town? Aye. Uh, Mr. Weber? Aye. We have no one else, so that'll be the motion carries 600. Seven. 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 Seven zero, zero. Why can't I do, do I not count myself? <laughs> the simplest thing. Now it's in my head. I'll never get it out. It's like calling Mike Bosky. <laughs> um, all right. Just mess up his name once tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Boshi is absent. <laughs> um, okay. Um, so that's it's a new business, right? Uh, Thank you, Jason. I had one question. Process. Mm -hmm. So these are pretty much a commodity. So we've got models that we're, we're looking at. 
we can send out a re- we can send out a request for bids mm-hmm. from several different vendors that sell this equipment. Um, then I guess we'll have to come back to this committee to approve those bids and then go to the board of selectmen. I'm looking up the dollar value and the purchasing policy, what part we're in right now. So 12,000. We've identified all of the John Deere and all of the Kubota authorized resellers in the area. So over $12,000 formal written proposals shall be submitted in sealed envelopes. So it's basically a sealed bid process Mm -hmm. is what we have to do. Then we we have to do them. Both boards will have to approve it. And then a board of selectmen will have to approve the purchase order. Okay. Okay. Got to fly. It's got to go quick. Yeah. When's our next meeting? Uh, December, right? 14th? Middle. Mm-hmm. 14th ish? I think I just look 7th or 8th. Late as possible. 14th. So, so we'll, you'd have to have, I don't know when conservation is that Thursday. The first. Wait a minute. Aren't we meeting in two weeks? We might. Yeah, it's the first and third. Seven. Oh, first and third. Okay. First and third. So does, how does it fall in December? 7th. Okay. We're so it's an off cycle. No, that would be. The, yeah. Oh yeah, seven. So it's off from the selectmen cycle. Okay. That does a lot because the selectmen meet on the thirteenth. When does conservation meet, Jay? It would meet on the second, and that is that's going to be tough, especially with Thanksgiving. Yep. Can the conservation have a special meeting? Would they? I'll talk to the chairman about that. Can can the two combine a special meeting, a meeting if needed? The... If seven. needed, can we do that? We're in Florida on the seventh. No, the eighth. You're not I just, tonight. I just <laughs> asked you today. Oh, you're in Florida on the seventh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I know what he's going to do. He's going to change our flights. We're going to be in Florida on the eighth. Excuse me. Call in. Yeah. Got a link. That's right. We'll call in. Call in. All right. So we'll try. We have to try to have this uh, a couple of bids in by before <laughs> the seventh, and then yeah. we'll try to get a joint meeting. Yep. Yeah. Because both commissions do it, then it can go to the selectmen on the thirteenth. I will talk. I'll talk to you tomorrow. We'll just identify those vendors, get it out as quick as possible. Should be easy because they're specific models. So we'll just ask for a price. Is there a difference between a request for bid and a request for proposal in regards to the town's purchasing policy? I don't think so. Okay, because we might want to send out a request for proposal because there's two different models. So that gives us, typically would give us the leniency to choose which one's best for the community that's the lowest yeah. possible price. Um, as far as, I mean, like a John Deere or a Kubota? Right. Yeah. If we were just going after one model, I think you would do a bid and the lowest price wins automatically. But seeing we're looking at a couple of different models. Yeah, this is price. what you want, so yeah. both, what's your closest thing? All right. Got this. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, Jason. Thanks, Jay. Thanks, Jay. Yeah. I don't want tacos. I want a chicken quesadilla. <laughs> um, <laughs> on it. Give it one more. All right, moving on. Um, field maintenance RFP that was approved last night, and Troy sent out the um, confirmation to the vendor or contractor today. Is there anything else that we need to discuss about that? I don't remember why it was on there. All right. Um, he that talent. Um, so what we discovered is the a couple of years ago when the heating system was, was replaced at talent, the thermostat that was installed is a residential thermostat. It's sitting inside a metal box in a cinder block wall. And when you close the panel, that thermostat is not getting the heat from the building. So that thermostat stays nice and cold, keeps telling the heat to run, and that's why Pickleball and some of the other teams have been complaining that it's been 80 degrees in there because it's never getting to the thermostat to shut it off. So I went down the other day and just opened the door, put a piece of paper up saying leave it open so the heat can get to it. Um, We had the vendor 
come in or the contract or the maintenance contract come in. I think it's allied or allied, mm -hmm. someone allied. He met me down there. He's going to order and replace the control panel, the thermostat, with a commercial model and or an industrial model. And that model will accept the um, external probe that is currently mounted on the wall. So when you're sitting looking at the panel where the heat is, there's a yellow box and that's actually a, an external thermistor. So he's gonna replace the panel, plug that back in, then we'll be able to lock it, lock the panel. Some things he said is the way the heating system works, it's basically for a, a, a warehouse. It sucks in cold air or sucks in air from the outside. Um, if it's minus 10 degrees, it's trying to heat that air up to 70 degrees and it'll just keep running. It's not like your home system where it circulates a lot. So you said the best thing to do and the most efficient way to run that system is you set it at a temperature and you leave it. So then it'll always run um, when it needs to. The other issue, and this is something I ran into, um, somebody shut off the heat. I went into town hall, turned on the heat. By the time I get to my truck outside, the fire alarms went off because the uh, smoke detectors in the ceiling are also heat detectors. So when the heat kicked on, the plenum is right by the smoke detector and it set off the fire alarms. So I had to wait for the fire department to come down and then they also <laughs> said, just leave it running. So moving forward, what we'll do is replace the thermostat, make sure the external one is working um, and lock the panel and then just let the heat run and then come spring, we'll turn it off. So we're gonna set it to 65? Um, I, he said, set it at uh, 60. How was it when you were in last night? Sunday. So yeah, it, it, was, it was fine. Wasn't hot, wasn't cold. I mean, the girls were running around. Nobody complained about being too hot. So much more pleasant than it was a few weeks ago. We were in there and it was 51 degrees. Yeah. Yeah. I, would. I, I actually preferred that. <laughs> <laughs> the pair of spectators did it though. I spoke with uh, Pickleball and they agreed they were in there and uh, it was set at the 59 degrees, 60 degree mark. And they they agreed. When you get in, it's a little chilly, but when, as you exercise, you warm up, and you know the sixty degree mark seems to be where it'll, where it'll stay. So, um, <clears throat> water usage at Talent. Uh, Troy sent an email the other day. Typically, Talent Hall we use between two and seven cubic units, and this month we hit fifty nine. And the flapper valves in three of the toilets were well, two of the toilets were constantly running. Um, so I went and I replaced all three with new ones to prevent them, you know, so that they'd work properly. The old valves were pretty deteriorated, especially in the ladies' room. It just it pretty much had a hole, a, a tear in it, so it was just constantly running. Um, so I don't know how long that's been going on, but 59 units is a lot. So hopefully the water, the water usage the other day, you didn't hear them running and stuff, right? You did a bang up job fixing them. <laughs> they were working perfectly. Um, Picnic tables. Uh, we talked about this before. I purchased the locks, a section of chain, cut them all down to, I think I put them at three foot or four foot sections, and I locked all the picnic tables to the pavilion uprights. So then now they're all staged, positioned, there's seven of them, and they're all locked, and I have not seen them moved. Um, as a reminder, the youth in town were stacking them and using them to climb on top of the roof and get up, get up to the rafters. Uh, AED device and talent um, that has been replaced when the fire department was down the other day with me. Um, he said that he, he got the new one in and it's in place and everything works. The box doesn't close all the way on it. So we're going to have to come up with a latch system or something so that it, it closes. Um, right now, you'll get the impression that somebody's been fiddling with it, but it's just the new device is bigger than the actual box. Um, and the only other thing What's the is the cost of a new box. I don't know. It's that bad. I would think not. No. You got about fourteen hundred dollars left over from your little spreadsheet there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it is. People I, can I ask to, the fire department. You know, what's the cost of the box to go with the new unit? Yeah, when we were there, um, Mr. Nichols asked Paul, you know, what about a new box? And he's he didn't look into it. But yeah, we'll. we'll That'll probably be the way to go because then we, if we get one that's secured, um, an alarm will go off if you open it. Yeah, so it'd be better off. Yeah. I know we talked about the battery being replaced, and um, it was actually the 9-volt battery that was replaced, not the $400 or $700 battery pack. 
for the AD, the AD race itself. Um, last thing, reach out to the deputy chief and ask him. Yeah, if you would find out how much a box would be, or yeah, hundred thirty dollars on Amazon. Hundred thirty dollars on Amazon. <laughs> Is it Prime? <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to um, get six weeks. Measure the device to make sure it's the, the, the width of it. He already ordered it. It'll be you know here's here's again now. Um, the last thing is a reminder that Christmas in Litchfield will have the tree lighting event on Saturday, December fourth, twenty twenty one, at six thirty to seven thirty p.m. with Santa lighting the tree at seven p.m. That they're all good over there, right? Have you been in touch with them? Not recently, no. But I'll check in. It is the season. It is the season. Is there any other business? When you were doing the chain down there on the picnic tables, did you happen to attach them to the fence? Uh, yeah, I put the gate too. The gate, yeah. Okay. I haven't locked it because I know there's a little. Yeah, I don't. I mean, the dumpster has to come out of there. Plus, I think it's a right away for uh, emergency vehicles, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the other chain had um, fire had a lock on it, and I don't. Someone else had a lock on yeah. it, but yeah, I put I that. Know, yeah, I noticed that on Sunday. The orange chain. Yeah, I, was yeah. Put that there. I think we're also at the time to get all the porta potties out of here. Yeah, probably. Do they not typically keep them? We don't keep them in the winter, right? We're better off getting rid of them. We have to pay for them. We don't use them, so yeah. that's true. I think all the field usage is pretty much over with at this point. I know baseball, one hundred percent. Maybe, is. maybe keep one at Royal Memorial. Yeah, I think you keep one there just because people at the playground and so forth. But all the other parks, I say, let's pull them, save the money. All right, I'll ask Troy to pull them. Do the dumpsters cost money during the year? Like, could they pull all the dumpsters? The only the only time you get charged for dumps is when they empty them, right? Oh, is that yeah, right? but we're on a cycle now that <clears throat> we have a set fee because we got in with solid waste. That I think the cost is what forty dollars a month, thirty dollars a month, or something. They were okay. a lot cheaper. The one at Corning is still padlocked and still hasn't been dumped in that process. I went down there the other day, so we had to pull those padlocks off. Oh, then they don't know how. To how to get into it because those gotcha. were baseball's padlocks that we did so gotcha. they did. should we lock the other dumpsters you think or well if we lock the other dumpsters the problem comes down to you have to either tell the waste management company what the code is right no i'm saying have them dump it and then lock them oh then you need to lock for the top and the sides right no just the tops it's only tops on these because they're the four yard ones yeah i'd go down around and lock them all after That's they get dumped ask them to dump them and then we'll find out when they dump them and then lock them down Lock them down so we're not just taking other waste and throwing it away. Yeah, because we had that issue with baseball for years. That's why I locked them. Especially at Cornet. Oh yeah, gets a lot down there. Probably all time to take down the tennis nets too, right? Already did. Andrew, Andrew, did. Did. Yeah, and you did you close the uh, gate at River Access? You yeah. did. Yep. Yeah, no, so. We said the same day, right? Yep. Yep. I, I saw it was close. Did you? Do you need my bungee to keep it closed? <laughs> I made it work. Did you provide? <laughs> <laughs> Use some straw grass. I think I actually tied the chain. I tied the chain in a knot. <laughs> That's, like, <laughs> That's all I had. Um, all right. I think that is it. Any other things? Everybody good? All right. So we could do a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. We have a second, please. Second. Thank you, Judy. Uh, roll call vote. I am an aye. Mr. Ruggles? Aye. Mr. Ames? Aye. Mr. Burns? Aye. Ms. Brennan? Aye. Mr. Town? Aye. Mr. Weber? I am an aye. Thank you, and have a good night. <laughs>